You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. How do I talk with my doctor if they're not offering things like tumor DNA sequencing or PET CTs, which are like fundamental basics of precision oncology, so that you can find out uh, what targeted therapies or immunotherapies you need. And targeted therapies and immunotherapies are what um, oncologists uh, uh, consider the evolution of cancer care. Chemotherapy is being replaced by these more targeted forms mm -hmm. of treatment. And in order to use these more targeted forms of cancer treatment, which make you live longer and have fewer side effects, you have to have the genetic testing to find out what's caused your cancer. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, depending on where you live, um, whether you have a public or private medical system, uh, depending on your oncologist and even the hospital in which they work and what their administrators tell them they're allowed to offer and kind of what's worth their time to keep abreast of if they can't prescribe it for you. A lot of doctors are just going to follow the standard protocol and not look that much more deeply, partly because they don't have the time, mm -hmm. partly again because they don't have the, yeah. the okie dokie to go outside of the box for you. And often um, patients just don't ask those questions. Well, they don't know to ask them. Exactly. And that's what we're doing today is mm -hmm. we're going to help you to understand really what's possible and what questions you should be asking <clears throat> uh, and, and essentially how to respectfully hold your doctor accountable to get you the stuff that's going to be best for yeah. you. And I think more importantly, um, this checklist is something that a lot of doctors would like to be able to provide. Um, and so I don't think they'll be offended by you asking any of these questions unless they truly haven't done their research. But I think this checklist, um, you know, this is what is required that the doctors understand about your disease. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, um, it's a great way to determine if your doctor's up to the task. Mm -hmm. And if they don't provide you with this information or they don't want to answer these questions, it's time to switch doctors. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you want to make sure that all of these questions are answered properly. Yeah, so it's totally okay to hear your doctor say, I don't know anything yes, about that. Of course, let me get back uh, to you. On that. Yes, yeah. um, what we don't want to hear is right off the bat, that's not going to help. But we'll mm -hmm. talk about that specifically. Mm -hmm. So, for the next little while, what we're going to do is we're going to run through a couple of different scenarios that come our way often, questions that we hear from clients about how to help their doctor use precision oncology on their behalf. Uh, and uh, just get get more kind of ease around accessing these it, evolved cancer treatments uh, mm -hmm. that are better than standard care in pretty much every country. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So how how would you like to do this, Michelle? I'm, I've created um, some some things to ask for, and maybe we could uh, go with that and use your examples. Yeah, I think why don't we go through the list of questions uh, okay. that uh, you prepared that uh, this is in anticipation of today, I asked Alex to jot down some of the things that he hears most often because I'm in a very different mm -hmm. role. He's on the science side of things. Uh, and so he's going to uh, hear some different things. So why don't we start with your list and the way that you might recommend uh, that a patient on the front lines addresses this with their doctor, and then I can fill out things as necessary. Okay. Um, I've prepared some pre-questions in order to set up the questions that ah, you have. Okay, awesome. <laughs> well, go on with your pre-questions. They're not necessarily then. questions, they're more statements, and I think that okay. will give a better um, answer to um, you know, your scenarios. Okay. So for diagnosis, what do you ask your doctor? The first thing you want to know is what were the tools you used to diagnose my cancer? Okay. And the tools typically include pathology, imaging and blood work mm -hmm. so you know just ask for what tools you use to diagnose it so uh, what type of pathology what type of imaging or yeah just ask if all of those have been used okay pathology. And, ask, and ask for copies of those tests pathology imaging blood work okay i want to make sure that's been done and i want to see copies of those tests yes Check. secondly mm -hmm. uh is there any potential for confusion or misdiagnosis um with with this case like, is this case often, um, you know, confused with another type of cancer that has similar uh, pathology? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a good question to ask. Um, you know, because often. they have alternative diagnostics. They have, you know, it could be this, but it could also be this. So just ask that question. 
you know, is there potential for confusion on the, or misdiagnosis on this using the tools that you, you've provided me with? Mm -hmm. uh, the third question you want to ask is, has there been any molecular profiling done? Mm -hmm. And that could, you know, for example, um, you know, it could, could be a variety of different features. Uh, molecular profiling in breast cancer would be the receptors, you know, knowing what receptors um, have been looked at. Um, and, and to what level has that been done? For example, if you have a uh, indeterminal um, HER2 expression in breast cancer, have they followed up, you know, using a immunohistochemistry, have they followed up and confirmed it using uh, a fish-based technology, a fluorescent in situ hybridization, which is much more accurate at really determining the HER2 expression levels? Because that could be very significant. It could indicate a whole new level of treatment. You could be triple positive without even knowing it. Um, and that could open up the doors for all kinds of different treatment options. So, so definitely it, molecular profiling. And, uh, and it sounds like you also want to ask what tex techniques did you use to do that? Well, yes. I mean, I'm just asking, I'm just saying this is what you ask for. Got it. You know, there's many different scenarios. Obviously, we can analyze each one and go into uh, potential situations. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, this is what you need to ask for. This right. is a list, molecular a checklist of, of, of things to ask for. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then has there been any tumor DNA sequencing done? Um, very important because that opens up the door for targeted therapies and immune therapies. And it can also tell you whether certain chemotherapy drugs are gonna work or not work, mm -hmm. or what chemotherapy drugs would be better than others. Mm -hmm. And then you also wanna ask about MSI and MMR testing. And the reason for this is that um, this is a rare occurrence that can happen in certain cancers. MSI refers to microsatellite instability. And it basically refers to an unstable genome that has a lot of changes in these microsatellites, um, which are just um, little areas of DNA that are not necessarily associated with coding. And then you also have mismatch repair. And this is a combination of genes that are involved in DNA repair. Now, if you have MSI high or mismatch repair damaged um, cancer, then the FDA has determined that a new class of drugs called uh, PD-1 inhibitors, or immune, uh, immunotherapy, immune checkpoint inhibitors, um, will benefit you regardless of what type of cancer you have. And this is really important because if you do have uh, either of these features, then um, you know these drugs are going to be wonderful for you. Mm -hmm. And because of that determination by the FDA, you can get it's easier to get access. You, you, anyone can get it. Yes, mm -hmm. you know every pathology lab can do this, but a lot of doctors don't know to ask for. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that they do ask for it. Mm -hmm. And then also the last thing is if you are under the age of 50 and you have a cancer, regardless of what your family history is, because that's not really relevant anymore, um, get genetic testing. So if you're under 50, get inherited genetic testing. And that should be covered by the medical system for anyone under the age of 50. It's been advised by the FDA um, and you know, these are important things that you need to get. Mm -hmm. So once again, what tools you use for diagnosis? Uh, number two, is there a potential for confusion on that misdiagnosis? Number three, what molecular profiling was done? Number four, was the tumor DNA sequencing done? And if not, why not? Um, number five, was there MSI and MMR testing done? Um, and you know, you probably will have to request that. And then finally, if you're under 50, has there been inherited germline testing done? So that's my checklist. Okay. So Michelle. Sounds good. Um, so back to the tumor DNA sequencing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you said, if not, why not? Uh, exactly. So what would a good reason be? Um, we hear many different, uh, we hear many different, um, I mean, a good reason is you need to know what is going on with your tumor. No, what I mean is, what possible reason could a doctor have for saying no and we're not going to? I've heard everything. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to get into that, I guess. We're going to get into that. heard everything, Somebody's... every excuse. Basically, you're going to have to pay for it yourself. Mm. Okay, I see. 
All right, we're going to come back around to that. Mm -hmm. But what you're at, the question, or the answer to the question is, there isn't a good reason no, to not do there it. There is not. Really, it's answer. just, okay, all right. We're going to go into more detail on that. Um, if you have any questions that are popping into your brain right now as we're talking about this checklist or just you're trying to imagine yourself actioning on this and having this conversation with your doctor and the things they might say mm -hmm. or uh, other pieces of information that might be helpful, just post them in the chat and Nadine will make sure that um, we get them. Um, okay, so you've given us your checklist, which That's was excellent, checklist. excellent, by the way. Wonderful. I'm, I'll uh, make a PDF of this, Wonderful. folks, because that'll be really handy for everyone to have. Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.